An important force for us is the force of gravity. And I want to take just a little bit to kind of distinguish between weight and mass and how gravity fits in. We use weight and mass interchangeably, but they are not really interchangeable. So uh, mass is the amount of substance in an object and actually weight is the result of the force of gravity acting on that mass. We'll talk about that. So three, two, one. So I want to kind of hammer out, we've been talking about forces, force is equal to mass times acceleration according to Newton's second law of motion. And I want to hammer out the force of gravity a little bit. Actually, it's the force of gravity that creates weight for an object. And weight and mass, even though we use them interchangeably, they are not the same thing. Mass, think of it as more basic. Mass is the amount of matter an object has. And then weight actually enters into the, into the picture when the force of gravity is acting between two objects. The mass of two objects creates the force of gravity. And the force of gravity creates, gives, that, gives objects weight. So weight is like how heavy an object is. So it's kind of interesting, I think, when we step on a scale, we are putting the scale between us and the Earth. And so honestly, what that is actually measuring is this mutual attraction. We think of it as attraction of us to the Earth, kind of the center of the Earth, but the Earth is also attracted to us. I think that's kind of neat. So I'm, I have uh, Newton's relationship, his law of gravitational traction in a minute. But what you're going to see is that, not so surprising, the larger the mass, like Earth is pretty darn massive, then the stronger the force of gravity. I have it to kind of contrast the force of gravity on the moon. The moon is less massive, and so that force is less. So weight then, weight, this is me standing on a balance, weight actually, and, and the balance is on Earth, is, uh, is actually a force. Weight is a force. So here is Newton's law of gravitational attraction. And we've got some variables here. A lot of times in physics we do kind of summarize the relationship, in this case the relationship of force, to variables. We have two objects that uh, we have the force of gravity between. I wonder if I have a picture coming up. No? Hmm. Well, let me draw a picture. <laughs> so here are my two objects. I'll call them thing one and thing two, mass one and mass two. And there is a gravitational attraction between those two objects. So this object is pulled over here, force of gravity, and this object is pulled over here, force of gravity. So they have, we have mass one and mass two. They are right here. The R value in the bottom is actually the distance between these two objects. So I'll just go ahead and kind of put D there, okay? And then G, and I looked it up to make sure I would get this right, I don't use it very much but G is a constant and in physical science a lot of times we find that uh, a constant that these variables are associated with each other relative to a constant so this constant it's kind of cool the constant for here on earth anyway is 6.7 I guess it wouldn't just be here on earth it would be not just on earth okay this universe 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11th. That's a very small number. We talked about scientific notation. So that means that it's what? This negative 11 means that there's what? 10 zeros, decimal 10 zeros, and then 6, 7. Units of the gravitational constant are meters cubed per kilogram. Also in the denominator are seconds squared.
Okay. So there you go. So like this slide says, if you increase the things in the numerator, if, if you increase the mass of either one of these objects, then you increase the force. The other thing is, can you see that what happens if you increase the radius? As you get farther and farther from each other, you might say, well, I bet that force of gravity is diluted, and you're right. So as you increase the radius, you're dividing by a larger number, and it makes the force less. Well, there you go. So just to kind of sum up, you know, you think I could hold up these two pens and you're like, oh, there's a gravitational attraction between the two. But now, of course, if I let go, what are the pens going to do? They're going to fall to the ground. Um, they're not going to cling to each other because these masses are so insignificant compared to the mass of the Earth. So here we have uh, Newton's law of gravity up there again. And now I have a little asterisk. We actually, uh, how do I say this? So I talked about mass in kilograms versus weight. Weight is actually then the gravity acting on that mass to create a force. And so I'll kind of say weight and force are the same, same thing. So when we are weighing ourselves on a balance, they say you're not supposed to do that all the time. Okay, so here we have a little guy standing up here. Okay, and that little guy, or big guy or whatever, is drawn to the center of the earth, and the center of the earth is drawn to, to that little guy. So picture putting that little guy's mass there, but more importantly, here we get to put the mass of the earth. And I looked up the mass of the earth. So the mass of, and symbol for earth is this, the mass of the earth is 6.0 times 10 to the 24th woo, kilograms. So that's a lot, okay? So we have a very big term here, very large. And the radius here is actually kind of like the slide says, think of it as the distance from the center of Earth's mass to where the person is. So that's what the radius of the Earth. So that's a very large number too, but so if we then kind of switch gears from instead of being on the Earth, okay, what if we went to the moon? And I don't know if you can see this caption very well, but our masses, the amount of matter we have would be the same. Say we're running 100 kilograms. Our mass stays the same, but what changes is our weight. So our weight, and I ran in, we ran into this before with regard to units of uh, force, the Newton is, a, is kind of the international standard unit of force. So our weight or the force that we feel towards the Earth is 980 Newtons. Um, towards the Moon is 162.2 Newtons. So that is actually what our weight would be on both of those. And why? Because you go up to here, and remember I had the circled red as the mass of the Earth. Now it would be less. It's the mass of the moon. Although the radius would be less too, right? Because down here we'd have to go right there. That would be less than this, which actually would work in the direction of making the force larger, but not enough to compensate for the mass. So here finally was the picture that I kind of drew a little bit ago. We have mass A and mass B kind of hovering over each other, or excuse me, hovering over the Earth. Okay, so this is A and this is B. Notice that they have one kilogram and two kilograms. These are like my pens. And there is actually a force of gravity between these two objects, but notice that it's negligible relative to the force that they feel, the attraction that they feel towards the Earth. But remember, it's in, those are always mutual attractions, meaning that those, those forces go both ways.